Welcome to worship on Reformation Sunday. We are back in the church for this, re this uh, Reformation Day. Uh, Chris Landon kind of uh, got things going for us last week with the children's sermon, brought the children's sermon back to church. So we're bringing the worship back to church uh, this, uh, on our online service as well. So happy Reformation Sunday to you all. This will be a service of Holy Communion. So please, if you wish to participate in the sacrament, prepare for yourselves. Uh, the, the elements of the sacrament, uh, bread, wafer, cracker, something for the first element, uh, wine, grape juice, or even water for the second element. We are having our second uh, round of congregational conversations on Sunday uh, after our in-person worship at, at 10 o'clock. The small in-person groups are going to meet here at church at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. We'll have our, uh, our Zoom meeting, uh, but thank you all for participating in those. We've had uh, four birthdays this last week. On Thursday, it was Kathy Johnson and Irene Wall's birthdays. And today, it is Steve Archer's birthday and Lyndall Cornelius' birthday. So, happy birthday to you all, and let us sing for you. people called and gathered, let us confess together our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
us pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on the church your saving peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. reading from Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read together the 46th Psalm. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved and though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea, though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. The nations rage and the kingdom shake. God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regard the works of the Lord. What desolations God has brought upon the earth. Behold the one who makes war to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. A reading from the letter to the Romans, the third chapter. Paul writes, 
Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. John, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Hey everyone, thank you for being with me today. Today I have one of my favorite subjects in all the Bible to talk about, love. And I want you to know that I have kind of dressed for the part. I have a heart necklace on, heart earrings, and a love chart behind me. To, so you know the theme for today is love. And in the Bible, love is mentioned a lot of times. And we are going to talk about a little bit of it a little bit later in the Ten Commandments. But if you take your fingers like this and you count to ten and then you put them together like this, you have a beautiful heart and that means love. So there's also a lot of songs that have the word love in them. And one of the songs that we all have grown up with that we all know and love is Jesus Loves Me. And we say those words at the end of every Sunday when we go to the baptismal font that we remember that Jesus loves me. So today I've asked my husband to help me with this and sing it for us while I do the actions because he has a beautiful voice and I want him to sing it for us. So as he sings it, I'm gonna do some actions to the song. Ready, go. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Okay. 
So now that we're gonna, we've talked about the songs and we've talked about love, I'm going to tell you a little story that happens in the Bible where a expert on the laws comes to Jesus. He's in a crowd of people preaching and everybody is amazed at Jesus' preaching. And this expert of the laws comes over to Jesus and wants to ask him a very important question. He doesn't think Jesus will be able to answer it. So he says to Jesus, which commandment is the most important one? And Jesus only pauses for a second and he said, the most important one is this, that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And the second is this, that you love your neighbors as yourself. Those two are the most important commandments in the Bible. And if we follow those two commandments, then everything else will fall into place and we will be able to follow all the other commandments in the Bible. So as you go along in your week, I want you to remember that Jesus loves you and we always, always, always can remember that in our lives. And if we love our neighbors as much as Jesus loves us, there will be no problems in the world. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to love with all our hearts, minds, and souls, and to love each other as much as we love ourselves. In your name we pray, amen. So again, we need to go to the baptismal font and remember to dip our fingers in and pretend that there's water there and we hold it to our heads and say, I remember that Jesus loves me. Now go and have a great week. Grace and peace to you this day in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Reformation Gospel is about freedom. If you continue in my word, Jesus tells us, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Sometimes, though, freedom is not all that we think it will be. And things that are free are not always all that worthwhile. Fellow clergy person and author Philip Gully tells the following story. Once a year, Phil says, my wife has a birthday. It's been that way as long as I've known her. But every year, it's the same problem. What do you get the woman who has everything? I decided one year, Phil says, to get her something she could really use. Our iron was making funny noises on the steam setting. So I thought I'd buy her a new iron. I asked my sister her opinion. She told me not to buy Joan an iron. Not very romantic, she said. I'm glad I listened to my sister. Irons aren't very romantic. It would be like giving someone a vacuum cleaner. So, Phil says, I bought her a wheelbarrow instead. The week before, he explains, my wife and our boys had been outside cleaning up the yard, picking up sticks and putting them in our old wheelbarrow. The load was unbalanced and the wheel wheelbarrow kept tipping over. So I bought her one of those new wheelbarrows with two wheels in the front. I don't mean to boast, he says, but that kind of thoughtful consideration has enabled our marriage to flourish. He goes on. Whenever Joan works in the yard, she takes our two boys with her. She's teaching them the difference between weeds and flowers. They're not in school yet, but they can already distinguish between wild bloodwort and shepherd's purse. 
Joan wants them to know these things before they're turned loose to hoe the flower beds. Though it isn't an easy lesson to learn or even to teach, it's an important one. Otherwise, they'll spend their whole lives confusing weeds for flowers and flowers for weeds. Buying my wife a new wheelbarrow, Phil says, raised the problem of what to do with the old one. The tire had a slow leak. Every time we used it, we had to pump up that tire. If we used it for more than an hour, we had to put more air in it. It's been like that all ten years we've owned it, a burden from day one. So he says, after buying my wife a new wheelbarrow, I filled the tire of the old one, hosed it off, hung a free sign on it, and hauled it to the curb. A man down the street spied it, shiny and red, glistening in the sun, tire full. He wheeled it across the street to his yard, delighted with his unexpected find. I drove by his house later that day. He was pushing that wheelbarrow across his yard. It was full of sticks, and the tire was now flat. It tipped over, and all the sticks fell out. He began kicking that wheelbarrow. I could hear him cuss and swear. Ordinarily, he is a saintly man, but that wheelbarrow has tarnished many a halo. This man has been living under a burden since the day he took up with our old wheelbarrow, one domino falling after the other. Because he didn't pick up the sticks, he rolled over a limb while cutting the grass and broke his mower. While he was shopping for a new one, the dandelions moved in and took over the yard. He ended up having to spray his entire yard for the dandelions. I was going to offer my help, but by then he wasn't speaking to me. All this from a wheelbarrow marked free. Phil Gully draws the following insight from this story. We take some things into our lives, he says, which have a veneer of blessing, and they exact a price we can scarcely imagine. We confuse bane for blessing and blessing for bane. I watched Joan teach our sons the difference between flower and weed, and I hope it will be a primer for their later years that those garden lessons will be the start in lives of wise discernment. I hope they'll learn that just because something's sitting at the curb marked free doesn't mean that it really is. He concludes, Jesus once taught about the cares of the world, that how they can grind a plant down to nothing. These cares are the things we bring into our lives with scarcely a thought. They promise good but deliver ill. The material goods that enslave us, the relationships that can crush us, the careers that tax our souls. Most of us have a flat tired wheelbarrow haunting us in one way or another. It helps to learn the difference between weeds and flowers, whether something should be left sitting at the curb or carried home with joy. Theologian Frederick Buechner has some thoughts along much the same lines. He wrote, We have freedom to the degree that the master whom we obey grants it to us in return for our obedience. We do well, he says, to choose a master in terms of how much freedom we get from how much obedience. And he gives these examples. To obey the law of the land leaves us our constitutional freedom, but not the freedom to follow our own consciences wherever they lead. To obey the dictates of our own consciences leaves us freedom from the sense of moral guilt, but not the freedom to gratify, gratify our strongest appetites. 
to obey our strongest appetites for things like drink, sex, power, revenge, or whatever, leaves us the freedom of an animal to take what we want when we want it, but not the freedom of a human being to be human. The old prayer speaks of God, quote, in whose service is perfect freedom. The paradox is not as opaque as it sounds. It means that to obey love itself, who above all else wishes us well, leaves us the freedom to be the best and gladdest that we have it in us to become. The only freedom, he says, love denies us, is the freedom to destroy ourselves in the end. The freedom of which Jesus speaks in the Gospel obviously means something more than only free choice. It is something more than political freedom, or even the freedom to follow our own conscience. It is spiritual freedom. And in this world, spiritual freedom means the most desirable way of being human. In the world to come, it means the freedom from death. It means the freedom that leads into eternal life. But in this world, the freedom Jesus offers is the way to be authentically ourselves the way into human maturity. Reaching this freedom, as spiritualist Henry Nouwen once noted, is a lifelong discipline. There is so much around us that works against it. The political, economic, social, even religious powers of this world want to keep us in bondage so that we will obey their commands and be dependent on their rewards. But if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. That's what Jesus tells us. And the truth Jesus seeks for us to know is this. We belong not to the world, but to God. Baptism marks us as children of God, not children of the world. God is the master we are called to obey, not the structures or powers of this world. Only in Christ will we find our true freedom. By living lives in which we keep returning to this truth in word and deed, we continually grow into this freedom. So, Reformation is not simply an event that happened years ago. It is an event that is happening now. And it is happening in each and every one of us. Reformation is a lifelong discipline, a continual reforming of ourselves in the person of Jesus.
With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Renew and inspire the church in the freedom of the gospel, O God. Where the church is in error, reform it. Where the church speaks your truth, strengthen it. Where the church is divided, unify it. Ignite in us the working of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. As the earth changes, as mountains shake and the waters roar, may we care for this planet as a holy habitation for all living things. Sustain all peoples and lands recovering from natural disasters of any kind. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Guide areas of the world divided or traumatized by conflict especially in our own land. Free all from slavery and human trafficking and protect all in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Release those living in bondage to debts, chronic pain or addiction. Grant healing touch to those who are ill. In the midst of a global crisis, we look to you for strength hope, and help in fighting the coronavirus pandemic. We pray for those stricken with this disease and those who are treating them, for those mourning the loss of life and those facing death, and for those who urgently work to find effective treatments for cure. We lift up to you those in our faith community needing your care. Betty, Bonnie, Janet, Marge, Roy, Pama, Sonny, Marlene, Jerry, Scott, Savannah, Lynn Ann, Kira, Caitlin, Andy, Reed, Nancy, Dorothy, Phil, David, D. The families of Helen Good, Charles Fowler, and Kathy Michaelis. Those affected by the wildfires in the western United States, those affected by the storms in the Gulf, and those we name aloud or silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. In this family of faith, we give thanks for courageous voices that have remained firm in their commitment to the one who frees us from sin and death. Centered in your grace, unify us in the hope of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Even in death, You free us and give us a place in your house. We give thanks for our ancestors who have shown us truth and freedom, especially Martin Luther and those who work for the renewal of the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God and hear God's words of forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us in all of creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. 
we keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Our sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, let us live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please now share the peace of Christ with those with whom you might be worshiping today. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come to the banquet table, where Christ gives himself as both food and drink. All are welcome. Now let us clean ourselves with these words. This is the body of Christ given for us. And this is the blood of Christ shed for us. And now having been fed as God's people, let us receive God's blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, 
into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Mother in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and lead us into the way of truth and life. for today, when asked what the greatest commandment is, Jesus responds, love. Love God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. But the love that Jesus is talking about is not some emotional love. It's not a passive love. It's not something that happens to us without our will or our control. The kind of love that Jesus is talking about is something that we do. It is loving justice and loving mercy. It's treating the stranger as well as we treat someone we emotionally love. It is being gracious and merciful to others. As a people called in freedom and sent to love, go in peace and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God.